The final day of joint practice has officially ended and it looks like the Raiders take doves on back to back days. We in here talking about practice. Well, yeah, I, I know that it's practice, but that still doesn't take away from the fact that the Raiders went out there and cooked the Niners. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> But in today's video, we're going to be talking about the newest addition in the running back room. And no, it's not Josh Jacobs. And I'm going to go over the biggest takeaways from today's joint practice. Man, oh man, I cannot wait. The Raiders, the Niners are going to be going live the very first game of the 2023 season. I know it's preseason, but I know a lot of people are excited. And if you guys are going to be out here in Las Vegas, man, tap in with all the events that's going to be going on. My guys over at Woodset Whiskey is going to be hosting an event out here, I believe, at the Luxor and the League of Bandits is going to be hosting a Michael Crabtree signing at the Mandalay Bay in Flanker. So definitely want to tap into that. I'll be over there if you guys want to come by, hang out. Of course, there's going to be a lot of things. And if you guys are not going to be out here in Las Vegas, I'm going to try to document as much as I can and give you guys the content that you guys deserve. Now, before we do get started with this video, if this is the first time you're coming across my channel and you're a huge Raiders fan, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification icon button to notify you guys when I upload more videos just like this. With that being said, Cue the intro. And you tell them one thing. Just win, baby. It's because you're not feeling oozy. Now, first things first, rest in peace, Uncle Phil. For real. The Raiders got a new running back up in the running back room. And no, it's not Josh Jacobs, like I said before. The Raiders have officially signed running back Damian Williams, adding more depth to the running back room, especially with running back Austin Walter going down with an injury just a couple of days ago, and Josh Jacobs yet to sign the franchise tag. Now, we do not know the details to this contract, but once we do find out about it, I'll let you guys know about that. As for Damian Williams, he recently played in one game last season with the Atlanta Falcons before suffering a rib injury and spending most of his time on the IR before being released in December. Prior to that, Williams had a short stint in Chicago and played for the Kansas City Chiefs where he won a Super Bowl. Now, does this move mean that Josh Jacobs will not be a Raider? No, this is more of a camp body, more of a depth chart signing for the Raiders right now, especially going into preseason. I mean, who knows if he'll even make the final 53. I guess as of right now, all we can say is welcome to the nation, Damian Williams. Now, I'm really excited to talk about today's joint practice. As you guys already know, the Raiders and Niners had a joint practice yesterday and sh sheesh, the Raiders killed it you know offensively defensively i know i was really hyped yesterday and i know there's a lot of raider fans out there that's really optimistic and then there's other raider fans that are still kind of doubting because it's just practice at the end of the day i understand that but I, i've been hearing a lot of reports not only from you know just the fans and some of the reporters but shout out to my guy hondo man he actually dropped a pod yesterday and talked about everything uh training camp the joint practices and i actually got to listen to it if you guys haven't already man go and listen to it man he really goes into depth with a lot of things that you know we don't don't see as fans but before i do get to carried away with all that let's talk about today's practice man players that did not show up to practice today according to tashawn reed was Britton brown josh jacobs hunter renfro chris lacy jesper horstead michael mayer brandon parker chandler jones tyree wilson darius harris david long jr and brandon Faison. getting in today's practice though you know i i woke up i opened my phone you know looked at twitter and the first thing i seen was Devonte adams goes down in practicing oh my gosh no 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 wait 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 I was really getting worried. I felt like my heart dropped. I said, no way. There ain't no way we're going to lose Devontae Adams. You know, according to JPA Football, this is the first thing I seen. Like I said, uh, they tweeted out, update, Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams had to be helped off the field after taking a hard hit and suffering what appeared to be a lower leg injury. He was able to walk off under his own power eventually, so let's hope everything is okay with him. Now, I, I initially read that, and like I said, my heart dropped. I said, man we cannot go down like this and you know i started to see more tweets kind of uh shuffling in shout out to sean reed saying that adam's injury is minor per source and also i seen another tweet of josh mcdaniels talking about the injury just a little bit saying that i don't think it was crazy serious it was a bang bang play so after reading that i, I at least i felt a little bit better you know i've seen some more reports coming out that he, he tweaked it and whatnot it's nothing too serious but he should be ready to go but as long as he's good to go week one then i'm okay right now we can't really lose any more big impact players especially on the offensive side of the ball because right now we don't have josh jacobs overall i'm just happy to hear that it's not that serious because like i said when i first opened up my phone and i seen this news i was like oh my god 
Scott. Moving on, let's talk about our quarterback, Jimmy G. Uh, you know, after having a tough, tough uh, weekend last weekend, you know, throwing a lot of interceptions, going into joint practice, you know, yesterday, he's been getting a lot of praise. I talked about it in yesterday's video. Jimmy G just looked nearly flawless. He even got some praise from his former coach that ran him out of Santa Clara, Cal Shanahan. Jimmy was unbelievable here. I think he was the best quarterback here in about 20 years since Steve Young. Has an unbelievable record, and every time he played and stayed healthy, we were either in the Super Bowl or an NFC Championship game. So I hope no one insinuates have ever said differently. Now, that's definitely some high praise, especially from Kyle. But that begs the question, why would they even let him go if he was the best quarterback or quote-unquote best quarterback since Steve Young? I don't know, man. Maybe it was like what Derek Carr was to us. You know, I think it was just time to move on. Maybe that was the same thing for them. I, I don't know. But as far as today, Jimmy G goes out there and he lights it up yet, yet again, driving down the 49ers first team defense like it was nothing, man. I, there's been a lot of reports that he was shedding that defense. He was th making some big plays out there. And shout out to Grant Cohn. Uh, I don't know how you say his last name. I've seen his video on YouTube. Jimmy G actually went out there, completed 12 of 18 passes and had two touchdowns today. He had one on a slant round to Jacoby Myers and another one to DeAndre Carter. So far, I've just been loving what I've been hearing from Jimmy G, especially at practices and, and from the coaches even from his peers out there and to hear how efficient he's been looking out there at training camp especially at joint training camp to go out there and not throw any interceptions man it goes to show that maybe our offense is just like that in our defense is just as good as well i'm gonna get to the defense in just a little bit but you could definitely see that jimmy g is just a guy that just leads by example just being myself i think being authentic be yourself and uh you know own it i think that's a big part of it because we spend so much time together in there, you know? I mean, we're here, you spend more time with these guys than you do your own family. So the guys are gonna see through the fakeness. I think just uh, being authentic, being yourself and you know, wanting to win at the end of the day, that's what, that's what people respect. Heck, even Andre James showed a little bit of love to Jimmy G as well yesterday. Man, he, he, he's cool, calm, and collective, man. It, it, you wanna be with a guy like that, especially at quarterback position. So having him in the huddle leading us, you know, wouldn't expect anything else. And I know there's going to be a lot of fans out there that see that clip or even hear what he had to say and are going to think that that's a knock against Derek Carr. I honestly wouldn't take that as a knock. I would just look at it as, you know, Jimmy and Derek Carr are just two different quarterbacks and they lead their teams a different way. So far, we've heard a lot of good things from the coaches. We've heard a lot of things from his former players, his peers right now, Andre James. And we've also heard Max Crosby talk about him a lot, you know, saying that he's a dog. He brings a different different energy over here to this locker room and as optimistic as I am for Jimmy G and for this team moving forward especially offensively the first thing for me was for him to show what he can do in this joint practice because he's going to finally have some kind of pressure on him and he's been excelling at that now the very next test for me to to, to really look engage Jimmy G is to see him do that in the game again as excited as I am about Jimmy G We'll just have to wait and see. Now, moving on, let's talk about the unit that has been killing it, not only these past two days against the Niners, but all of training camp. Let's talk about the defense, man. I know that this has been the unit that has been getting criticized a lot for the past couple of years, and we really haven't had a formative you know, defense. But this year, man, I, I feel like it's just a little bit different. I know that we didn't really have a lot of turnover as far as signing big free agents and whatnot. We have mostly a lot of the same guys with a couple of you know draft picks and a couple of veteran players that got added. I guess the biggest name that we had was just a couple of weeks ago when we added Marcus Peters. A, a lot of people have been showing a lot of praise to the defense. And then going into today's practice, man, they still kept that same energy. It's one thing to look good uh, one day, but to do it again for another day when the team already kind of got to feel all of you, to see them go out there today and look the way they did, you know, coming away with six total interceptions, man. My goodness, man. The Raiders didn't even have six interceptions, I, I think, all season last year. So to see them do that just today, hats off to them, man. Shout out to Sean Reed. I seen this from him because he kind of basically broke down all the interceptions that we had today. Of course, we had a total of six interceptions. Robert Spillane, who's been showing now so far in training camp, had two. Luke Masterson, Duke Shelley, Marcus Epps, and Marcus Peters all had one interception for a total of six. Like I said, man, that's great to hear, uh, especially coming out of training camp. Now, a guy that 
that I do want to talk about on the defense side of the ball that has been getting a lot of praise and that has been, you know, opening a lot of eyes out there, especially mine. Somebody I didn't really have on my radar has been Nesta Jade Silvera, you know, the seventh round pick that we had this year. Now, I didn't really hear too much about him until I watched the Mad Max Crosby Mike Obsession. And when I see Mad Max kind of showing a little bit of love to Nesta, I was like, Okay, you know, Nesta's kind of getting, you know, a little bit of love out there. Of course, Max has love for everybody out there. But Nesta was a name that kept coming up over and over and over again. And just yesterday, Max Crosby also had some praise for Nesta and his presser. Hell yeah, Nesta's a dog. He's getting after it. I love him since the first day he came in. He had the attitude. You could just tell, like, he's hungry. He's just getting better and better. When you're a young guy, you know, I told literally all the rookies, like, when they came in. Technique is one thing, you know, but... You can't coach effort, you can't coach attitude, you can't coach the little things, the little things you see on film, the flying to the ball, the 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 heart, the all that the, all those little things. And like Ness is one of those guys you can see it clear as day. You know, obviously he's got things to clean up. Obviously he has room for improvement just like all of us, but you know, he's a rookie. But the way you stand out is flying to the ball, um, being mean, uh, having an attitude, and he's one of those guys. You know, he plays violent, uh, he's getting better as a rusher, he's getting better against the run, um, and he's able to do a lot of things. So uh, I love what he's doing. I think he's 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 going to be a big, you know, big time player for us. Also, shout out to Hunter Carpenter. When I listened to his podcast yesterday, he also brought up Nesta and had some great things to say. So hearing all of that, man, he's going to be a guy that I'm really look forward to watching not only this week, but throughout the whole preseason. And if he could live up to the praise that he's been getting in training camp, man, and we could get ourselves a solid defensive tackle that could be, you know, the next Max Crosby, you know, a late round pick that ends up becoming a household name. It would be perfect for this team and for this defense, man. And to see that this team could start building through the draft would be huge because we all already know that, you know, when we go out there and spend money in free agency, it really doesn't work out. Overall, I know I've been yapping a lot today, but it seems like the Raiders have won yet again day two. Shout out to Honda Carpenter. He tweeted out day two of Raiders versus 49ers joint practice. The 49ers came out more intense, but the Raiders took yesterday to another notch and the silver and black one day two. Football is about consistency and winning back to back practices is a big deal for the Raiders. That is definitely what you want to hear coming out of training camp, especially joint practices. I know we have the Rams next week, so we'll see how we look in that joint practice. But as of this week, to cap off today's practice just the way that we did like i said with turnovers with the defense showing now with jimmy garoppolo just taking control of this offense driving down the 49ers first team defense and scoring twice today on top of yesterday's performance it just really shows that the future is bright and maybe just maybe McDaniels could lead this team to victory throughout the 2023 season. Again, Raider Nation, let me know what you guys think about this. I'm really excited about the future. I'm really excited to hear everything that we heard today, man. Uh, this team might be different this year. Again, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself, but... What are your guys' thoughts? How do you feel about this team? Do you feel like this team could be different this year? Do you feel like this team could make a run this year? Do you feel like we can at least win more than seven games? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. With that being said, until the next video, this is your boy Simone Raider and your boys, yeah!